Greetings everyone, Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Ranking the Albums. Today we're going to take a look at my top 10 favorite albums from Canadian guitar legend Pat Travers. So some of you might be asking, Pete, but how, about, how come only 10? Because this guy's got like a million albums, all right? And I've heard a good chunk of them. I don't own all of them. He's got so many of those iconic blues releases that came. I mean, he is, you know, it's amazing. I went to go look at the list of all the studio albums that Pat's worked on in his career. It's just like, my, I never knew it was that, that many. It's like, holy cow, has this guy been busy since he debuted in like the mid-70s. Um, but he's got like some that I, you know, cherish tr quite a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run down my top 10 favorites. Okay. And uh, we'll kind of leave it at that. But I think uh, most people will agree these 10 that I'm going to mention, or a good chunk of my top 10, are probably going to be a lot of people's favorites, right? So, but because he's got some classic ones, right? So, coming in at number 10, I'm going to uh, throw out one that I actually don't have on CD, but I used to have on cassette way back in the day. Uh, it's actually a pretty cool album, kind of kickstarted the 90s for him. Got the fiery guitar on the cover, right? Some pretty rocking tunes that are just kind of out of that kind of late 80s hard rock era. School of Hard Knocks, all right, pretty good one. It's one that a lot of people don't seem to talk about, but, uh, you know, because by 1990, you know, the musical climate was changing. A lot of the guitar heroes, we talked about this with you know, Robin Trower and Frank Marino, a lot of the guitar heroes from, like, the 70s and the 80s just trying to figure out how they all fit in, right? But I think the School of Hard Knocks, pretty enjoyable album. It's pretty rocking. It's got some great guitar tones, so that's number 10 for me. Coming in at number 9, we're going to go with 2015's Retro Rockets. Phallic Rocket, notwithstanding. <laughs> Terrible cover here, but uh, anyway, um, this is a uh, Purple Pyramid release. I actually kind of dig this album. This, I think, out of uh, a couple of the albums that came out right around the same time, uh, I like this one a little bit better than Can Do. Uh, I think this is a pretty pretty good return to form for Pat. Uh, I Always Run, very strong song, Mystery at the Wrecking Yard. It's pretty rocking here. It's bluesy, I Am Alive, Searching for a Clue. Um, pretty strong album. All right. You look, take, took a, I remember when I got this, I took a look at that album cover or CD cover, and I was like, oof. But uh, it's actually a pretty strong album, and I dig it. So it's one of his uh, his uh, stronger ones in more recent years. Also, you know, uh, and I'll talk. I'll see it for the end. I was going to throw out something to kind of mention, but I'll throw it at the end. All right, next up, number eight, 1982's Black Pearl. I played this quite a bit when this came out. M. Guana Kick Booty. <laughs> Great little kind of instrumental song with a little little vocal line there. Uh, I La La Love You. All right. It was kind of a FM sort of hit. It was played quite a bit. Uh, I'd Rather See You Dead, another song that got a little bit of attention when this came out. Uh, Who Will Take the Fall is really cool. Can't Stop the Heartaches. Good album. Good rocking album. Good like early 80s album, I think, from Pat. Uh, coming in at number seven from 1981, the album that came right before it, Radioactive. Uh, I mean, this this album, I think, for a lot of people, if, if you were kind of following Pat Travers earlier on in his, his career and, like, start, you know, he's getting moving into the 80s now, this was kind of like a little bit of a departure because it's not as guitar-heavy as an album as some of the ones that came before, but still, <coughs> excuse me, still really strong, I think, some great tunes. You know, New Age Music, fantastic song, great guitar tones in that. Uh, My Life is on the Line. Uh, what else? Untitled is very cool. Electric Detective. I don't want to be awake. You know, it's some of it's kind of poppy. You know, he's been kind of dabbling in a little bit of that kind of like weird reggae thing too going on. But uh, it's, it's still it's funky. It's bluesy. It's Pat Travers. Great vocals. I dig it. Fun album. Uh, coming in at number six from 1984. I actually like this album better than the two that came before it. Hot Shot. This is like a return to you know hard rock and Pat Travers. Uh, quite like this a lot. You know, I Got a Fight, blistering guitar work in that. You got Killer, da -na -na -da -da -na -na. pretty rampaging guitar licks in that one. Uh, just Try Talking to Those Dudes, Hot Shot, the title track, Women on the Edge of Love, got a little bit of play. I think they may have had a uh, MTV video for that as well. Uh, in the Heat of the Night, Night and Today, Tonight, uh, very strong album. Still listen to this, crank this one up to this day. All right, number five from 1976. We're going to go all the way back to the debut. Self-titled Pat Travers. Here's kind of where it all started. Uh, some strong tracks on here. 
but not quite as kind of polished, I should say, as some of the albums that would come in its wake. Uh, and here we've got, uh, you know, Pat. We got um, Peter Mars Cowling on bass and Roy Dyke on drums. This is before... Um, you know, the more notable drummers would come and start playing with the with the band with his band. Uh, feeling right makes no differences on here. Okay, you got stop and smile. Uh, boom boom out go the lights makes its uh, studio debut here. You got the little medley at the at the end. You got Hot Rod Lincoln Maybelline. You know, it's a good album. Uh, not quite as good as some of the ones that would come shortly thereafter. Especially my number four, uh, putting it straight, which is right here. That's the second album. Right there. Uh, another very notable album, uh, Life in London. Great song. Getting better. Getting better. Better all the time. Fantastic song. Uh, Running from the Future, Offbeat Guide. What else is on here? Loving You, Dedication is Excellent, Speakeasy. Very, very strong album. Uh, what else? Where are we at? Number three. How about a little Crash and Burn? This was the second Pat Travers band album that I bought after the live album was the first one. I think most folks uh, kind of came on board, especially if you're about my age, probably came on board with that live album. And then this one came out shortly thereafter. So this was the kind of last album, uh, if memory serves me correctly, with Pat Thrall on co-lead guitar. So this has got uh, the title track, which again is not a very guitar-oriented song. It's more kind of kind of keyboard heavy with those atmospheric kind of mysterious vocals, but a really good groove to that song. It works really, really well. Uh, you got uh, Can't Be Right, great rocker, snorting whiskey, of course, obviously uh, the uber popular heavy rock track from this album and one of Pat's heavier songs. A killer rendition of Born Under a Bad Sign, right? You got Is This Love, the remake of Is This Love, right? Kind of cool. Pat, like, like I said, was dabbling a little bit of reggae type stuff around this period. You got The Big Events, Love Will Make You Strong, and Material Eyes. All right. And, uh, you know, of course, this is the classic, classic Pat Travers band lineup. Tommy Aldridge, Pat Travers, Pat Thrall, and Peter Mars Cowling. A terrific, terrific band. You know, you talk about one of, like, the all-time great lineups. Right there, folks. Right there. Coming in at number two. And again, my top, my top four could really kind of change. For me, the top four are just absolutely spectacular and top, top notch Pat Travers. So these could kind of, you know, I, I was like, I kept flip flopping these top four and I'm like, Ugh, I'm just going to go with the way I have them. But uh, if you ask me next week, I could change them around just a little bit. Going to go with uh, 1977's Making Magic. All right. Also from 77. So he was pumping out some, a lot of albums right around this time. So this has got the title track. Fantastic. Uh, Rock and Roll Susie. Another great, great tune. You Don't Love Me. You got Stevie. The kind of like ballad Stevie, which has those great kind of echoed guitars, you know, with the delays on them and stuff. Very, very cool song. Uh, Statesboro Blues. All right. Well, did, he did a bunch of covers throughout his career. Uh, Need Love, Hooked on Music, rousing heavy rock tune. I always love Hooked on Music. Even better on the live album. And What You Mean to Me. Very cool. So you got Pat on the back playing a, uh, holding up a Telecaster. As you know, he would move to predominantly uh, Gibson guitars shortly thereafter. Um, and my number one, Heat in the Street from 1978. It's that bad boy right there. Uh, it's just got such a great collection of songs. You know, you got the title track, Heat in the Street, which is, you know, funky, bluesy, plenty rocking, Killer's Instinct, I Tried to Believe, the incredible instrumental hammerhead. All right, Go All Night. Dun, 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 dun. Great song. Evie, Prelude. One for me and one for you. Again, like the top four could, you know, these to me easily, you know, everything you see here, one, two, three, four, are easily my favorite Pat Travers. But, you know, like I said, I do like the debut a lot. Uh, I, I do like Hot Shot. You know, quite frankly, Hot Shot might, might, might even be better than the debut. It's really no better. It's what you like more, right? Um, all good, all good stuff. So Heat in the Street, 1978, number one. Making Magic from 77, number two. Number three, Crash and Burn. Number four, Putting It Straight. 
Number five, Pat Travers, self-titled debut. Number six, Hot Shot. Number seven, Radioactive. Number nine, wait, it said number eight, Black Pearl. Getting ahead of myself. Number nine, Retro Rocket. And number 10, School of Hard Knocks. Uh, like I said, I did want to, um, I pulled a couple others out that I kind of really dig. Um, I just want to make sure people don't overlook Swing. Swing is the last thing he's put out. It's mostly like uh, like a big band jazz album. Very, very cool. Very enjoyable. Very different, though. Very different. And I wanted to mention something else, um, which is not a Pat Travers solo album. It's an album he did with uh, Carmine Apiece called It Takes a Lot of Balls. This is actually pretty damn good. Um, like I said, I didn't include it because it's not a Travers solo album or Pat Travers band album. It's kind of like this duo. These guys did a couple albums together. But uh, this is really good. Just just kicked up muscular blues rock, right? Which is decent. And, uh, you know, of course, my favorite Pat Travers album of all time, if you're looking at studio or live, is the Live Go For What You Know album, which is, you know, one of the greatest live albums of all time. One of those should have been a double, right? <laughs> That's got the Thrall and Travers duo, Guitar Majesty working at its zenith. Uh, like I said, it's probably one of the best examples of like uh, that kind of like dual guitar thing, you know, in a hard, in a bluesy hard rock framework ever. Uh, great, great album. Great tandem there with those two guys. Actually, that like I said, that band is just absolutely spectacular. Absolutely spectacular. Tommy Aldridge, Peter Mars Cowling, Pat Travers, Pat Thrall. Doesn't get much better than that. Visit us on the web at www.catranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. So you know how it goes, guys. Uh, let's hear, list your favorite Pat Travers albums in the order that you like them. Remember, there's no right or wrong answer here. We all like what we like, and that's uh, the ones I mentioned today, all pretty damn special, so they can really, you know, like I said, any given time, my order can kind of change a little bit, and I'm sure yours will be a little bit different as well. Uh, if you want to tackle the whole catalog, hey, go right ahead. I've got like 30, 35 albums. That I just was looking at the list, and I'm like, holy smokes. Pat has been busy since he burst on the scene, right? <clears throat> so, um, and some of those kind of bluesy albums are actually pretty good, too. He did, like, in the 90s, did a lot of those blues albums, as a lot of the uh, these guitar heroes were doing. Um, and those are pretty good, too. But uh, these are my favorites. And like I said, there's a whole bunch of other things and collaborations. It's just so much stuff. I said, you know what? I'm just going to do my top ten. There we go. So, like I said, this is on the web at www.catranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. Tomorrow morning. Martin Popoff coming back on the show. We're going to count down our 10 favorite songs each from Badlands, Jakey e. Lee, Ray Gillen, and company. Uh, Jack Toledano is coming on the show. We're going to do top 10 songs of Primal Fear. We're also, uh, hopefully this weekend, if not this weekend, next weekend, we're also going to rank the albums of, of Primal Fear. So for all you power metal fans, look forward to that. Jason Tipton, guitarist extraordinaire from Zero Hour, is coming on the show for an interview to talk about the upcoming New album from Zero Hour. Can you believe it? Can you dig it? I've been waiting for that forever. So that's all happening this weekend. And uh, hopefully, I'm going to try and pump out, if I can, if not, it'll be during the next week, uh, I'm ranking the studio albums of Canterbury Progressive Rock Legends Caravans. That's coming up well as well. And uh, all sorts of other stuff. All right, so stay tuned. And uh, we're going to finish out the, the series of favorite albums of the year. Tomorrow is 2019, and Sunday I'm going to kind of wrap it all up, look back on all the years from 1965 to 2019, going to give you my five favorites, and then next week starts the brand new show that I'm hoping to bring you every day, if not every day, at least a few times a week. It's going to be called Deep Cut Dive, and just to explain to you what Deep Cut Dive is going to be all about, Deep Cut Dive, we're going to take a look at every show is going to be based on a particular band, and specifically bands that had or have had big hits, greatest hits compilations, songs they play live all the time, what we're going to do is I'm going to go into their entire discography and I'm going to pull out five really special deep cuts Okay, that you're not going to hear, probably hear them play live, that you're not going to see on a greatest hits collection, and that you're not going to hear on the radio. Okay. And these are songs that you should be investigating. And again, there's going to be they're going to be examples of how great a lot of these bands are beyond those hits. Because you know, I'm always a big 
believer and there's so much more great music from a lot of these bands beyond what you hear on the radio or you see on the greatest hit set or that they play live every single tour so that's what that's going to be and that's also going to be and what's we're going to try and make it interactive just like the you know classic live album war and the you know favorite album of the year uh, series is here's my favorite five deep cut tracks and then i want you guys to kind of chime in in the comments below and talk about some of your favorite non-hit non you know popular songs from a lot of these bands and we're going to pull a lot of the usual suspects it's going to be across all genres so you know all forms of you know metal hard rock progressive rock southern rock uh you know all that kind of stuff you know classic rock you know pop rock whatever all the bands that we normally cover here that i like so that's what that's starting next week all right so i'm really looking forward to that it'll be a good way to kind of talk about songs from bands we all love that songs that nobody ever talks about right or the people casual fans don't even know so it'll be a great example for some of you who maybe don't have a lot of exposure to some of the bands we're going to talk about or only really know what you've heard on the radio okay now we're going to give you some examples of songs to go and check out That'll help you hopefully investigate the rest of their catalog, right? That's because it's the goal here. So stay tuned for that coming up, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow, right? Take care. Bye-bye.